This video looks at trial and error design using root loci methods with MATLAB. So first a reminder of where we're going in general. We're asking ourselves what are root loci and why they're important and how do we compute them. And then later on we want to ask questions about how do I use these root loci in order to make selections about compensator design. Now, in this particular video, we're going to focus on how you can use MATLAB and CISO tool in trial and error approaches to determining compensator gain. Okay? And the idea is to get the best performance possible, assuming you can have no other control parameters other than a simple scalar gain. So put some background. First of all, we're assuming a simple feedback loop of this form with a compensator M and a transfer function for the system G. We're going to assume in the compensator can be written as m equals k m tilde, where k is the scalar gain and m tilde contains all the dynamic elements. So we can now write gm essentially as k n over d, where k is the scalar gain and n over d contain all the dynamic elements. From that, you can get the closed loop pole polynomial pc equals k n plus d. Now, in the first two videos, we showed that you could easily calculate the closed loop poles as a function of k. And we gave a number of examples, both on pen and paper and using MATLAB. And we also showed that you could infer the expected closed loop behaviours with different values of k from this root loci, and in indeed demonstrate that those inferences worked using MATLAB to calculate the closed loop step responses. What we want to do now is look at MATLAB tools for showing the whole root loci, that's for all positive values of k. The previous videos just used a small finite set. But in particular, we want to ask ourselves, how do we deduce a suitable value of k in order to achieve desired closed loop behaviors? So the first few videos looked at analysis. And now what we want to do is move to design. Some examples then. So you'll see we've got four different examples here which are listed. Um, example 1, k of s plus 2. Example 2, k of s squared plus 4s. Example 3, k times s plus 1 of s squared plus 5s plus 6. And example 4, k times s plus 5 of s, s squared plus 5s plus 6. And what we want to do is ask ourselves how do we find a suitable value of k? <coughs> the technique we're going to use is we're going to sketch the entire root loci, that's for all positive values of k, and from that root loci we're going to identify which positions seem to be the best. And then we'll find the corresponding k for that position um, basically using the rlocus command. So we'll do this by demonstration, it will be much more effective. Okay, first then, let's enter these four transfer functions. There they are, g1 to g4. So we'll put them in the system. And then we're going to look at them one at a time. So first, we plot the root locus for system one. There it is. Now, what do you notice? You notice the root locus starts at minus two, and it goes to the left. So your question is, where exactly do you want the closed loop pole to be? What sort of behavior do you want? Now that's a choice that you're going to have to make. Now I might say, for example, I'd like the pole to be somewhere around here, somewhere around minus 5. So what I'm going to do next is put in some specified values of k, there they are, and then use the R locus command with an output and see if I can find a pole which has got a value minus 5. So here we go. Now I've not gone far enough here, that doesn't really matter. You'll see with the k's I've chosen, the poles only get as far as minus 4. So let's put some other k's in. Let's go down to up to 3. Try that command again. And now you can see the 30th position gives me a pole at minus 5. So I can find the compensator in the 30th position. And there it was. It was k equals 3. So if I use k equals 3, it will give me a pole position of minus 5. Let's look at the next example then. So we'll look at G2. So again, I'll plot the root locus. There it is. I better get rid of these um, these writings so they don't disturb us. So there's the root locus for G2. You can see a pole starting at 0 going to the left, a pole starting at minus 4 going to the right, meeting at minus 2. So we might say, well, look, the best place to put the poles is somewhere around here. 
somewhere around minus 2. If k is smaller, I've got a slow pole. If k is bigger, I've got oscillation. So again, let's put in some arbitrary values of k. You'll see I've put in there 10 to 40 in steps of 1. And let's calculate all the poles for all those different k's. And now what I've got to do is search through these poles and find the one that matched the position I'm looking for. So, so I've gone too fast there. So you can see, basically, the values of k I've put in are too big. Because you can see for k equals 10, I get pole positions minus 2 plus or minus 2.44. So what I can do is go back write my kk again and say well obviously I don't need to be as big as 10 so let's try 0 to 10 in steps of 1 and see what we get there. So what do we get now? We find ah that looks good column 5 gives us both roots at minus 2 so that corresponds obviously to the fifth value of k so let's see what that was kk5 and that was a choice of k of 4. So I've managed to use the plot to say where I want to be and then used a bit of trial and error messing around with these k values in the rlocus command to find out which k actually puts those poles there. Now let's try g3. So there's g3 and you see with this one it's not so clear cut because we've got one pole going to the right and one pole going to the left. And so in this particular case it's not easy to say what's best. But again, I can do the same trick. I can put in some different values of k and I can see what sort of pole positions I get. And I can look through these pole positions. Here they all are. And I can say which of those matches the position that I most want and pick out the corresponding k. But I think with the fourth it will be a bit more interesting. So we'll go and look at the fourth. There's g4. So here's the root loci for the fourth. And you'll see in this particular case we have a pole starts at 0, goes to the left, and then gets to this point here, and then pole starts here. And so the question we're asking ourselves is where would be the best position based on this root loci plot? And I'm saying I really want to be somewhere around this joining point because that puts the poles about as fast as they can be without being too oscillatory, and that's somewhere around minus 1. So let's put in these values of k again. There we go. And let's calculate the corresponding poles and there's my list of corresponding poles so if I go up and see where do I get myself so that essentially the imaginary part is close to zero and the real part is close to minus one and you can see the divide is somewhere between column seven and column eight. Column seven I had a pole at minus one and minus 0.77. Column eight I had minus 0.87 plus or minus 0.27 so column eight looks about right so the corresponding k there is that, 0.55. So if I use that k, it will give me closed loop poles somewhere around there, which is roughly what I want. Now, what about CISO tool? You saw that R locus, and you probably thought, well, it was a bit messy. Although it's quick and easy in one sense, it was clumsy. It was, you know, trying to guess what Ks you had to use, etc., etc. Not particularly ideal. So, what might we want to do? We might want to, an alternative tool. So, it wasn't obvious which pole positions went with which value of K, and displaying to the command window was clumsy, etc., etc. It wasn't obvious what the corresponding behavior was like, although you could make a guess or an inference, you wouldn't know for sure. So what are we going to suggest? We're going to suggest that if you use CISO tool, you'll find it's a lot more systematic to use in order to gain all these insights and see everything at once. So how does CISO tool work? Well, it's got three windows. First, the main window shows the root loci. So you can actually look at that and say, where do you want the poles to be? But in particular, it actually marks very clearly the actual closed loop poles for the current choice of K. And that's very useful. So you know exactly what poles go with which K. It has a separate window under analysis tools that allows you to simultaneously view all the closed loop step responses. So for the current value of K, you can see the sort of behavior that you get and you can modify k and see how the step responses change. 
It also has a sort of management window which allows you to see exactly what the value of the compensator is and other choices you might make. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate CISO tool on these four examples so you can see how it might work. So what I'm going to do is first of all we've got to run CISO tool and if it doesn't exist at the moment you can just type CISO tool G1 and it will run CISO tool and put G1 in. So here we go. Now it's opened up. Now it's going to produce three windows as I said. So there's the first window. Okay and you can see the root loci in the left. You've got this second window here which is the sort of management window which I'm just moving down to the bottom so it's out of my way and that allows you to see the compensator. You can see at the moment the compensator is 1 and if you move across here you'll see there's this tab which says analysis plots. So if I click that and then I go to plot 1 step responses I'm going to have to expand this up a bit so I can specify and I'm going to have closed loop output closed loop input and you'll see it's given me another window here it is which shows me the closed loop output step response and the closed loop input step response so now I can see lots of things at once first of all this pink blob tells me the current value of the closed loop pole with the compensator 1 I can change that compensator. Let's see what happens if I put in 2 and you'll see the pink blob moves and you'll also see that the step response is changed. I could change that compensator to 10 and you'll see the step response is changed and the pink blob moves. So you've got a very visual way of seeing how the closed loop pole changes along the root loci as you change the compensator again and also how the behavior changes. Now G1 is rather simple so let's try a more challenging one G2. So if CISO tool is already open I go to this tab here file I can go import and it will allow me to enter under here any transfer function which exists in the system and what I'm going to do is make sure the compensator is 1 again Oops, just to be on the safe side so I should be able to import those and now you'll see I've got the root loci for G2. You'll see it was that cross shape. But notice again the two pink blobs, a pink blob here and a pink blob here, which tell you the position of the closed loop poles with a compensator gain of 1. And here are the corresponding step responses. So let's increase that compensator to 2 and watch the pink blobs. Did you see them move? But where was our target? We really wanted to get to this cross because that was about as fast as we can get. So let's increase the compensator again. How about 3? It's getting closer but still not quite there. How about 4? And now you can see the pink blobs have gone exactly on that cross and here's the step responses and you'll see the time scale here 2 to 2.5 seconds to settle. Now what happens if I make this C even bigger? I could go to 5 and what do you notice? We've now got complex behaviour <clears throat> and you'll begin to get a bit of oscillation creeping in. If I go as far as 10, hopefully it'll be really transparent. You'll begin to see a bit of overshoot here and a very aggressive input. Let's try G3 then. So what I'll do is I'll clear the compensator. So you can go designs, clear all compensators. That will set it back to 1. Let's go file, import. And now let's put in G3. So there again, you can see this was the root loci for G3, and you can see with a gain of 1, those pink blobs tell you where the closed loop poles are. And as you change that K, you'll see how things change. Very, very clear. This one's a bit of a challenge, because you'll notice as the compensator gain gets larger, you actually get slower to settle, because this pole is moving to the right. But I think G4 will be the most interesting, so we'll go and look and we'll put in G4. Now I better reset the compensator as well, so I'll reset that to 1. OK, so again, here's the root low side for G4. And you'll see with a compensator of 1, I've got slightly complex poles. See those pink blobs? And you'll see in this step response over here, a bit of an overshoot. So if I reduce that to maybe 0 0.8, what do I see? The pink blobs coming down, less of an overshoot, reduce it to 0 0.6. Pink blobs coming down, no overshoot now, and that's probably about as good 
as you can get. So hopefully you see the argument. If you've got the right tools, you can see everything at once. I can see my compensator choice here. These pink blobs tell me where I am on the root loci, and I know where I'm aiming for. And I can check the behaviors over here to check I'm getting what I expect. So some conclusions. We've demonstrated MATLAB tools for viewing root loci and the corresponding closed loop behaviors. We've also shown that you can do trial and error design on MATLAB. Now, it might not be particularly efficient. It's almost systematic. Um, but the problem with it is it doesn't actually give us effective design rules, especially, and this is the key thing, what if we want to add additional compensator poles and zeros? It doesn't tell us how to do that. If we only want to change the gain k, it's quite useful. You can see where you want to be on the root loci, and you can set gay k accordingly. But if you can't get good behavior just by changing k, it's not obvious what to do. And that's what future videos will 